All right, how are we doing everyone? So we're coming at you again with another video. So we've already talked about how to structure your workout and we've talked about the beginning of your workout with your warm up and what all that entails. So today we're gonna to be going over the cool down and your core portion of your workout, what that should look like, what objectives you wanna hit, all that kind of stuff. So let's get right into it. All right, so to go off of kind of how I structured the warm up one, we're gonna go over some objectives that you wanna hit with your cool down core section of your workout. I'm also gonna make it as basic as I possibly can. So when, my, when I use, utilize some terminology and things, I'm gonna try and break it down and make it a little bit easier just to understand, uh, especially if you're new to the gym, there's some terms and things that you may not be aware of. Um, so I'm just gonna make it as basic as I possibly can. So. Without further ado, let's check on our objectives that we wanna hit for this cool down core section. So number one, we wanna lower our heart rate. So we've done a workout that's elevated our heart rate a little bit, gotten us sweat um, and gotten us working hard. So now what we need to do is try and bring that down close to or at a resting heart rate so that we can leave the gym feeling a little bit more relaxed and ready to go. The number two thing is gonna be more stretching. So we wanna be sure that not only did we stretch at the beginning, but we stretch at the very end just to maximize our flexibility gains that we can create and to also make sure that we're recovering properly whenever we do leave the gym. And then number three is we wanna develop our core strength. So not only for the show muscles of your abs, but we do wanna develop those inner muscles of your core and of your back so that it can help you with any other lift uh, that you may be utilizing, especially with deadlifts barbell back squat, things like that. We want to develop that core. It'll make those a lot easier to do. Um, and it'll just be a lot easier for any of your machines or uh, exercises that you will be doing. So with your cool down and core, normally you can take that about five to 10 minutes, depending upon how uh, into it you want to get. So normally what I like to try and do is whenever I get done, um, I will go specifically into some sort of foam rolling or stretching immediately after. Um, for this purpose and this purpose only, um, just for the basic gym goer and things like that, I'm just going to give you a breakdown, kind of like what I did with the warm up, with the cool down, I'm just going to give you a breakdown that can apply to anyone. Now, if you're an athlete, power lifter, bodybuilder, something like that, your cool down is going to be a little bit different depending upon, uh, what your goals are and things like that. So, uh, if you are to do core, you're going to finish your workout and remember that's about 55, 45 to 55 minutes, depending upon how much you do. And then you're gonna go into your core. So normally with your core um, exercises or things, there's a couple of different exercises or options that you can pick. So you can do ones that target the superficial muscles, which are that six pack or eight pack, 10 pack, whatever it is that you may have. You can do the superficial ones, so are the ones that are showing, or you can target your deep uh, core muscles, which is going to be, um, below those types of muscles. It's going to include your lower back, your obliques, and your core in and of itself. So what I like to do and what I like to recommend is do a little bit of both. Uh, so we want a strong core to help us with our everyday activities, like picking things up off the ground, putting stuff away, things like that. We want to make sure that we have a good strong core, especially as we get older, because it does help us in our everyday life, along with some workouts and exercises that you do in the gym. So we wanna be sure that we build that plus the superficial muscles so that when you go to the beach or something like that and you wanna show off your abs, we do have those built as well. So with that, normally you wanna go four or five exercises depending upon what it is. And I like to do it in a circuit style. So basically what the circuit style means, you can do it one of two ways. Normally you will start with an exercise and then immediately once you're done with that exercise, you'll move on to the next one. You can give yourself another variation, it'll be 10, 15 seconds to switch between one exercise to the other and then go into that next exercise. And I like to do that as a circuit. So I get my first exercise done, then second, third, fourth, or fifth, depending upon how far I go. Then I'll rest for a minute, minute and a half, and then I'll restart that whole circuit. So the circuit just means that you're doing it continuously. You'll do a little bit of a break at the end and then you'll rotate back to the very beginning. Normally when you do that, you wanna do two, three rounds. You can do four uh, if you're feeling adventurous or a little bit more advanced. But what I'd recommend for beginners is stick around two to three uh, rounds of that whole entire circuit and then do four exercises, three, four exercises. So when we're doing things like that, your superficial muscles, the workouts that you're gonna be doing for that are gonna be any type of crunches, 
hanging leg raises, um, things like that. You're going to do sit-ups. Um, you can do flutter kicks. You can do anything and everything like that will target those superficial muscles. And then your main ones that I would suggest adding in are your planks, which is going to be that deep core muscle that we want to build, which is going to help us with our everyday life and help us with exercises in the gym. So you can do a bunch of different variations with the planks. Um, you can do a regular plank, you can do side planks, you can do a plank to a push up, a, a bunch of different things. Uh, we don't need to get into all that. So to keep it kind of basic, you can do two or three uh, superficial ones. So that, things that'll get you moving through and then your plank one, uh, throwing that at the very end. And then a normal baseline is you wanna try and start at around 30 seconds with your planks and then you can gradually work your way up from there but that's normally how I would try and structure that. And normally that'll take you a couple of minutes here and there. And then once you get done with that, you're gonna move into your stretching portion. So once you've done all of your core, you're gonna go into your stretching. So with this one, it doesn't need to be as intense as the beginning portion was where we did foam rolling, static and dynamic stretching. Um, just for the basic person, I would do a couple of different stretches depending upon whether it's lower body or upper body. Do a handful, three, four stretches, something like that. But make sure during these stretches, you are properly bringing your heart rate down and deepening your breaths. And so what I mean by that is slow your breathing down, take big deep breaths in through your nose, exhale out through your mouth, take it nice and slow, uh, work your way down, bring your heart rate down, try and calm yourself down. You can change up your music, you can do anything like that to help bring you down um, from the high that you were riding during your workout. But what I would suggest is spend that time, lower that heart rate, bring that breathing down. You can even go onto a treadmill afterwards uh, and go super light and just start walking. And like I said, big deep breaths in and out. Please, please avoid bending over to try and recover. So whenever you see people that are bent over with their hands on their knees, trying to recover from their breathing, you're not allowing your lungs to fill up as much as they should in order to bring your heart rate down and to bring your breathing down. So please be sure that you have, your staying upright. If you need to put your hands somewhere, you can put them on top of your head. You can keep them down to your side, whatever the case may be. But just please make sure that you're not bending down. You're gonna compress those lungs. They're not gonna be able to fill up as much as you would like. So you're not gonna be able to bring it down as effectively. And honestly, you're kind of hurting yourself in the long run, not being able to catch your breath. So to kind of recap so far, once you finish up your workout, you want to go into your core portion. So normally what I recommend two to three exercises that are going to be for your superficial muscles or the ab muscles that you see. And so there's going to be your crunches, your bicycles, uh, heel touches, things like that, those moving ones. And then you're going to one or two where it's going to work your deep muscles. So it's going to be your planks, whether it be side or regular planks. So you're wanting to do that. I would recommend in a circuit just to start off. If you want to do something else later on, there's a bunch of other resources on YouTube. We'll be putting some stuff up as well, but that's where I would start and do it as a circuit. Like I said, two, three rounds, do the whole entire thing for however many reps that you decide that you want to do. Normally I try and stick around 10 to 12 reps per exercise. And then I do about 30 seconds on whatever the plank variation that I chose that day. Then I'll do that, like I said, three total times and then I'll be finished. And then you'll be technically done with your workout and starting your stretching portion. So during this time, it's really kind of up to you in terms of what you want to do. I personally recommend doing some static stretches. So some stretching holds that we kind of talked about in our warm up video. And then also doing some foam rolling here and there if you are so inclined to do so. It's just going to help promote blood flow to the area that you were working out that whole entire time. Even though there's blood already going through, we want to be sure that we're promoting that still because it'll help in our recovery process so we're not as sore um, in the days following. Now, there's also water and nutrition component that goes into your soreness, but uh, the foam rolling portion does play a role in reducing some of your soreness, stiffness, all of that kind of stuff. So once you do all of that, you're pretty much done and ready to go. Like I said, you can get on the treadmill, uh, do a little bit of a light walk, something like that so that you can start to bring your heart rate down. Don't try and do anything too intense. Um, like I said, five to 10 minutes. Once you're done with that five to 10 minutes, you should be good. You're still sweating, but you've brought your heart rate down, which is what we were trying to do, which is our first objective. You've stretched out a little bit more during your stretching time. And then you've developed your core strength through your superficial um, muscles and through your deep core muscles. So 
I normally try and keep my core at the very end. We don't want to fatigue it at the very beginning and then try and go into these heavy compound. So we don't want to fatigue our core at the very beginning and then try and go into these heavy compound lifts when our core is already fatigued and we're not able to keep tight right around in this general area. So I try and throw it at the very end and then that way we can maximize as much as we possibly can out in the gym and then also maximize as much as we can in our core at the very end. So once we get all of that done, we've accomplished all of our objectives. We are done in the gym and we are good to go home. So like I said, um, this is kind of your structure for a cool down. This is going to last you for a very, very long time. You can change up your core routine exercises. You can change up your stretching routine, all of that, but just keep that basic um, stuff in mind is you do want to make sure that you stretch at the very end. It'll help you out a little bit. You do want to lower that heart rate as much. So yeah, those are your three objectives that you are trying to hit. You want to lower your heart rate, stretch out a little bit more, and develop that core strength. Um, if you go through it exactly kind of how I laid it out, you will accomplish all three of those goals, and you will be golden. You will be set on your cool down, and you will be able to take that as long as your fitness journey goes. So uh, if you enjoyed that, leave a like, subscribe. Um, if you have any questions about the cool down, all the things that it entails, if there's anything that I missed, definitely leave those down below. I will be looking at those. Um, some of the things to come will be terminology things um, to kind of help you all out, especially if you're new to the gym. Um, breaking down the core strength a little bit more, some exercises that you can do, breaking down your cardio options, all of that kind of stuff. We'll get into all that later. But right now you do have an effective um, structure for your workout. You do have an effective warm up and cool down. So now we can get into some of the other stuff. So if you liked it, drop a like and we will catch you in the next one.